Hi, my name is Shannon Nipissa. I'm also known as Shan. Before my tragedy, I lived a normal life in South Africa. I became a quadruple amputee due to septicemia. I was in a coma for nearly two weeks in early 2017. While I was in the coma, my hands, feet, nose and lips died and I was told I needed to have my hands and feet amputated. To date, I've had 66 surgeries with approximately 20 more to go to reconstruct my jaw, mouth and nose. I have remained positive through all of this <laughs> and believe that can't is not a word and that you can accomplish anything you put your mind to. Hi. <laughs> This show is to motivate and inspire others through my story, as well as my guest story. Welcome to my show. Hi, it's Shan, and today I have a very special guest by the name of Megan Hunter with me. She has a potentially life-threatening disease with the name of MC, and I cannot pronounce it. Megan, please help me out. Thank you so much for having me here, Shan. So it's called Myasthenia Gravis. Um, and it's a neuromuscular autoimmune condition that the message between my nerves and my muscles gets blocked and my muscles just don't want to listen and don't want to do what, I, what my brain is telling them to do. Okay, now what was life like before you, you got MG? So I was a very healthy child. I never got flu or mumps or chicken pox, none of those kind of ailments. I was very active. I did dancing, netball, hockey, everything possible. And I was, I was just so happy. And I had that dream, you know, when you're younger, you have the dream of what you're gonna do after school. I was gonna be a doctor. I was gonna be a mom. I was gonna have that picket fence life. Everything was just, it was at my feet, yeah. Why can't you be that now? So I've had two rounds of IVF and unfortunately the first one ended in a miscarriage oh, no, and so then weird. the second one didn't work and last year i had a stem cell transplant that put me into early menopause so i'm 30 years old with menopause, menopause. it's great <laughs> is it mg that is that is um played a part in all of this you not being able to pull pregnancy and that is that is that what caused it so I was on chemo for a couple of years to try and suppress my immune system and just get my body to behave a little bit better. And that really had a huge impact on my fertility. And what, um, how were you diagnosed exactly? What were the symptoms of uh, MG? It took a while. When I first started, my cheeks started going numb and I'd gone out for dinner with my sister the night before and we thought maybe my drink had been spiked. Because, I mean, why else why would you? Yeah. Um, and then slowly it started going, I started slurring my speech and I was battling to swallow. So we went to a doctor and he told me I had anorexia um, and I was looking for attention. So I had to go to a psychologist. And after about a month of counseling, he phoned my mum and he was like, no, there's, it's not there's all something in your head. more. Yeah went back to the doctor and now it was psychosomatic as well and it was called Globus Hystericus. Um, so sure. again, he told me it was all in my head and I was imagining this all. And yeah, we really didn't know what to do. Um, my mum was struggling with knowing me so well, but also trying to believe a doctor. And it was... I began to think that maybe I was making up, maybe yes. I was just looking for attention. Um, I was 15, so... Still quite young. Yeah, and it's at that awkward age where, I don't know, I felt like I didn't quite know who I was and where I was going. And yeah, so it took a couple more months. I got down to about 40 kilograms because I couldn't sure. swallow. I was sleeping about 16 to 18 hours a day and eventually got in with the neurologist and within 10 minutes he was like you have my senior gravis if you hadn't come here this week you probably would have died because i was i couldn't even swallow my own at saliva that at that point yeah what exactly were your symptoms though so um i couldn't walk upstairs i couldn't get out of bed on my own my mum had to bath me and dress me i slur my words quite a bit uh, yeah, battling to swallow. I can't close my eyes properly. 
anything that's muscular. muscular. Carrying things, my fingers often just open because they can't grip onto anything. So yeah, it really is my whole body just didn't want to listen. And yeah. your day-to-day -day life, how does this affect you? Can you drive and um, cope with your day-to-day -day life or does it, does it affect you? So things are a lot better now. I had that stem cell transplant last year. But before that, I was in hospital for a week out of every month, just trying to survive. Yes. I walked with a walking stick um, and I would work about half a day, have to nap for two hours and then try and carry on after that. I drove about 10 minute distances and I couldn't do any Anymore. more than that just because my feet would sometimes give up and I never wanted to be in traffic and then like <laughs> not be able to yeah. keep going. Yeah, oh, but definitely no. much better quality of life now. Are you on medication or is it just a stem cell transplant that, that helps? No, I am on medication now. I'm on what they actually give to transplant patients to prevent them rejecting the organs. Oh, yeah. I know, I know. To suppress your, your immune system and all that. And what do you do for a living? Oh, I have the best job. Oh, I, that's good. Um, so I actually work for a charity called Rare Diseases South Africa. And I initially started out as just a patient. We were living in KZN and I volunteered for a few events, tried to get more awareness in KZN. Then when we moved to Joburg, it was when I was at my worst and no one wanted to employ me. Like, you would want to employ someone that's off for a week out of every month. There's no way. Yes. And so Kelly, the CEO, offered for me to go in when I could and help out and she hasn't been able to get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> now, what exactly do does rare, uh, South Africa's rare disease do? So we provide support for patients all over South Africa. We help them to find the right doctors, the right treatment. We fight with medical aid to get all of those things paid. Um, and we put people in touch with other people in a similar position. For a support system. Yeah. And I hear that you got an amazing award in 2019. Can you tell us a bit about that? So, oh, it was such a surprise. I got nominated for the SA Woman Givers Award um, for my work that I do with the Rare Bear Project, which is a project of rare diseases in South Africa. Okay. We employ ladies in Kaya Sands Township that crochet toys. And Is then, that what these are over yes. here? Yes. Oh, they're um, amazing. And people can either buy one for themselves or donate one to a patient living with a rare condition. And so I got nominated for that and I write a blog uh, just supporting local and trying to spread kindness wherever I can. And when they announced the winner, I think I sat there for a while and I was like, no way, uh, no, no. Um, yeah, it was what an absolute honor. Um, now, if somebody wanted to buy one of these or donate, how, how would they go about? We have a website, which is rarebearproject.org and people can, if they donate 180 Rand to the project, then they can get a rare bear for themselves. If they donate 150 Rand, then we send a rare bear to a patient on their behalf. So they all come with a little tag and says like, hug me when you're feeling blue, I'll be there oh, for you. Amazing. And it has the donor's name at the bottom and we send them all over South Africa. Uh, what is your mantra in life? It's from a movie called Wonder. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I haven't, but I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'll make You'll sure cry. to go see it. <laughs> Let me just warn you that now. It's about a child with a rare condition that causes facial disfigurement. Um, and he goes to regular school for the first time and it shows like how people judge him before they get to know him. And the teacher stands up one day and he says, in life you're given the choice to be right or to be kind and always choose kind. And that's really what I've tried to adopt every single day. That was going to, in, in our show, we try and give our guests a word to, to associate themselves with or to elaborate on. And that was the word I wanted to give you was kind because in a world where you can be anything, just be kind because you don't know what the other person's gone through. And yeah. um, I think that, that it's so special because you don't know what it means to the other person to just show kindness. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And wouldn't the world be a much better place if we were just kind to one another? Exactly. And we didn't judge before we, we knew what was going on or just help people realize that they're people and that they loved. And it doesn't cost anything. Yeah. What advice would you give younger children or anybody for that matter of fact that's going, that has a rare disease? I think my biggest piece of advice would be to get in touch with rare diseases and find a support system um, that I wish I'd known that they were around when I was diagnosed because I honestly, my whole family felt so alone because you don't know someone who's going through all of that. And yes. we've got like a group called Conversations for Caregivers, which is for caregivers of to rare educate patients. them. Yeah, and to let them know that there are other parents going through all of this or husbands or wives and you'll never know your inner strength until you really have to fight for your life. Yes. And just don't give up. I think yes. every day get out of bed and think, I can do this. I, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to let this defeat me. Have your little moment. Cry if you need to. Don't feel like you have to be strong the whole time. But then pick yourself back up and keep going. Yes. Thank you so much, Megan. I really appreciate you being here and for sharing your story and for opening us up to, to what you're going through. And to everybody out there, just remember, if there's anything you can be, just be kind because you don't know what the other person is going through. Until next time, take care. Thank you so much. Thank you.